A CDC advisory committee meets this morning to decide if it's safe to resume the use of the Johnson & Johnson one-dose COVID vaccine. It was paused, as you recall, last week to investigate a potential link to a rare but serious type of blood clot. CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus joins us. David, good morning. What should we expect from this meeting, do you think? Good morning, Anthony. Ten days ago, they stopped and they looked around the country and made sure there weren't more than these six cases. A couple more showed up, but it's a very small number. My gut, my opinion is today they will release the J&J &J vaccine for the country. There will be a warning on it so doctors and patients are aware of what to look for so they can treat this abnormal blood clot early. And we're going to be back safely administering this vaccine, hopefully by the end of the weekend or Monday. You think they'll do this, David, despite the fact that there is one more woman who apparently died? died from the vaccine? Yeah, I mean, what, what we've done is we, we've seen across the, the world now these kinds of low platelet counts and blood clots in several people with all of the vaccines. So this happens. The spike protein from the vaccine affects the blood vessel and causes a response, so there's a blood clot there. It is remarkably rare. So when you start to look at this, it is much, much, much safer to get the vaccine than not. And I think now that we're aware of it, we're going to be able to treat this early without serious yeah. ramifications for the patient. We didn't see this, though, um, these severe cases of blood clots in the J&J &J, &J vaccine trials, David. Why, why not, do you think? Well, I mean, this is, uh, I think, and a testament to how rare it is. The trial was tens of thousands of people, 40,000 people, and we're seeing this at a rate of about one in a million. So once we start to get in the millions and tens of millions, rare side effects happen. Now that there's a warning and we can identify it early, again, hopefully there won't be serious problems from the vaccine, but the vaccine are saving millions of lives. David, the CDC says it's uh, considering revisiting guidance on masks, particularly for people who've been fully vaccinated. What do you think we should expect there? Well, the data are showing that this virus is transmitted almost exclusively indoors, over 90% of the cases indoors. When you wear a mask, mm -hmm. you uh, 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 can block that spread indoors. But outdoors, especially in the vaccinated, probably isn't going to be necessary. So my gut is that over the next few weeks, we'll see that starting to fall down and that we're going to be able to go outside without masks. It's still going to happen indoors. Israel this weekend or last weekend uh, stopped the masks in outdoors, but not indoors. How, how long? before you think we're free from masks entirely? Uh, my gut is, you know, toward the end of the summer is we're going to get toward herd immunity in our country. Our mm -hmm. company, country is going to step up and everyone will be vaccinated who can be vaccinated. And we're going to be coming out of the scourge. Unfortunately, the variants are still worrisome, yeah. but I think the current vaccines attack the variants at the present time. All right, Dr. David Agus, thanks so much.